A 16-0-1 record for the Columbus State Lady Cougars was good enough, as you would expect, for a eighth Peach Belt Conference regular season championship. Now they set their minds towards a Peach Belt Conference tournament championship and in the near future, a national championship. Hello everyone, welcome to the Walden Soccer Complex in Columbus, Georgia. Stephen Williams here with you alongside my partner, partner. Tony, it's good to have you here. Glad to be with you. Tony Frankovich alongside me here in the booth at the Walden Soccer Complex. Everything you've done in the past means nothing now. Everybody zero and zero and one loss can end your run in this Peach Belt Conference tournament. That, that's exactly right. Uh, when it comes to conference and all playoffs, it evens out all teams. And the burden is on, pressure is on, on favorites. And uh, if you are underdog, you know, sometimes you like to be underdog. Nobody, when nobody expecting you to do anything, you can, you can actually do some damage. The Lady Cougars, the number one seed in this Peach Belt Conference Tournament, the quarterfinal round starting today. USC Aiken, the opponent, as the Pacers come here from Aiken, South Carolina, the number eight seed in this Peach Belt Conference Tournament, appearing in the tournament for the first time since 2008. And they come in here as heavy underdogs, but as we mentioned, anything possible when it gets to tournament play. These two teams fighting for the right to go to Evans, Georgia. Always, uh, when it comes to uh, really playoffs, it, 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 it's uh, fun, it's, it's, uh, it's really exciting time. That's what you train, you played all season long is exactly for this moment. Let's hope CSU gonna came, came out really strong and, and really come out strong and, and play the way they can. And, and I think uh, if they play, uh, you know, 75% of they are capable of, I think they, they wouldn't be sweating. Your Columbus State starting lineup, the Lady Cougars wearing the all-white home uniforms. It'll be Nicole Corsioni, Ashley Miller, the senior, and Kelsey Pelletier, one of the other seniors up front, the forward positions. Taylor Marks, Shelby Rowling, Cassandra Wade in the midfield, Andy Larice, Casey Davis, Jessica Sauer, and Becca Calder along the back line. USC Aiken in their road Navy uniforms with the white lettering and white numerals. We'll start with the opening possession as they work the ball down the field quickly. USC Aiken working right to left as you're looking at it. Columbus State working left to right. These two teams met back on September 27th in Aiken, South Carolina. It was a 3-1 victory for the Lady Cougars. They tallied three goals and then gave up one in the final 10 minutes. A disappointing goal for Coach Jay Inlick because he wanted to see them finish off 90 minutes without giving up a blemish. That didn't happen, but they did get a 3-1 victory, and you know they'd love a fast start here this evening. And that's exactly what they're going to count. They're going to try to score a goal early and, and score often if they, if after that, you know. But main thing is get the first one. And uh, we're having a nasty habit, uh, sweating out a little bit before get the first one. USC Aiken coming into this one 6-8-3 overall, 4-5-2 in Peach Belt Conference action. They're coming off a bad, bad loss for them on Saturday. They went to Dahlonega at North Georgia and took a 9-0 loss, but they were without a couple of their leading scorers and things kind of fell apart for them there. So we'll see what their ability is to shake things off and roll from here. I mean, that, that's a, just a huge loss, 9-0, nine, nine but as, as it always, <laughs> it's a blank sheet now. <laughs> they start with clean sheet. For USC Aiken, Heaven Tiley along with Akila Ferber, Jenna Beauregard, Haley Pipkin, Kim Byer, Ella McDaniels, Taylor Simmons, Tori Caldwell, Caroline Gillespie, and Sarah Moore, the 10 field players, and back there touching it for the first time, Nicole Cranny. Cranny, the freshman from Ireland, has started all 17 matches this season for the Pacers, the only Pacer to do so this year. Everybody else has missed at least one game in the starting lineup. Her opposition on the opposite side, Malin Parsons, the Sophomore goalkeeper for the Lady Cougars who just earned her third Peach Belt Conference Goalkeeper of the Week award she, yesterday. She earned that, no, no doubt. We've seen her all year long. She was solid, never mis making mistakes. You know, I, she was really stud there. Malin Parsons has played 315 consecutive minutes in goal without allowing one to get past her. Lady Cougars did give up a goal last Wednesday to Montevallo, but it was with Parsons already out of the game and the Lady Cougars comfortably ahead. So Jay Antlick choosing to get some work for Miosha Hatcher, who ended up giving up that goal, and the Lady Cougars picked up a 5-1 victory. This team, though, the last time 
that we had them on the air here took a 3-2 loss to Clayton State. And you look at that and you look at the record and say things don't match up. There's no loss in the column for CSU, but a ruling came down about a week and a half ago that took Clayton State, had four wins. They had taken off the board for a player that should not have been playing. And that thus then gave CSU the victory, a 1-0 forfeit win in that one, and gave them what is now the first unbeaten regular season in the 11-year program history. I will take it, but you know, you don't like to win that way. You know, it's always doesn't feel right, you know, but you know, rules are rules and, and it's not as clear, I don't, I don't think so, in Peach Bell Conference, whatever conference told them to sit out that player, uh, but you know, double check, triple check if you have to, and you know, Clayton State might have been now conference champion. Clayton State would have been the conference champions. They would have tied with CSU, but they would have taken the number one seed. It would have changed how things were. This cross is played to Ashley Miller on the right side, working against the defender there. Tries to play it into the center. Had it deflected away that time by Kim Byer in the center. Miller will take the opening shot of the game and an easy scoop and save for Cranny outside the goal. You look at it though, and I think there's two, two frames of thought. You may be getting the best of both worlds here if you're Columbus State. Yes, you are undefeated and you don't like that the way you got it, but you are undefeated, but you don't have the <laughs> pressure of being undefeated because you've already lost once. Yeah, we, we, you know, we didn't do anything wrong there. You know, it's, it's a league's decision, so it is what it is. And sometimes though, you get to this point in the year and you haven't lost a game, you start to feel the pressure. Well, they've lost one, so exactly. the pressure really isn't there despite the zero in the loss column. Becca Calder plays it forward on the right side, going for Pelletier in the near corner, being defended this time by Sarah Moore. Pelletier trying to dribble, looking for a cross. The cross got into the six yard box, deflected away by Byer. Miller fighting for it again, and it's Wade that comes over to win it. Called her into the center. Shelby rolling with a lot of green space. Will fire with the left foot and right into the chest and the waiting arms of Cranny, but a lot of room to work for rolling and got off a good strike. There was a Pelletier made this happen. Nice moves, composure, and she put on a clinic a little bit in that corner, made good cross, a little short, but uh, we ended up at the end a really quality shot, quality goal scoring chance. You know, um, uh, sh Shelby playing in that spot, it's like sweeper in front of her. I think that that's a, she's perfect. She's athletic on that. She can clean a lot of stuff coming to that defense. And also she can come up and score some goals. This is Wade with it now. Right. And the offside flag put up. The referee right here underneath us on the near sideline. Holding up the flag there to stop that one. USC Aiken again though. Working without its top scorer, Hannah Allison, the senior out of Beaufort, South Carolina. Nine goals, didn't play though at North Georgia and not dressed out for this one. So the challenge in the hill gets a little bit steeper for them. But if you're USC Aiken at this point, you have nothing to lose. Zero to lose, you know, nobody expecting you to do anything uh, and, uh, but, but convincing loss. So, so all, all, only way they can do is go up. And for USC Aiken, they know the next time they lose, their season's coming to a close if they fall short in this tournament. For Columbus State, the stakes aren't quite as high because they know a loss in this tournament's not going to change anything for them as far as the NCAA tournament goes. They're going to be in the NCAA tournament. And you would imagine, despite a loss in this tournament, if it happened, they probably have earned their way into a host spot oh yeah, next oh weekend yeah, no. in the opening two rounds. I know who wouldn't vote them to, to play in. You know, everybody can, can slip once in a while. And nobody inside the region, or at least nobody inside the conference, has fewer than three losses now on the paper. And CSU, with a loss, would have two. So you would imagine they're locked into that spot. First and second rounds of the NCAA tournament next Friday and Sunday. If in fact they are here, like imagine, we will have those games for you live here on Cougar Sports TV. We're glad you're with us, whether you're in Aiken, South Carolina, or somewhere else across the country or internationally. We're glad you're with us here on what is a perfect, perfect Friday, or rather Tuesday night. Well, you got used to it on Friday, Steve. <laughs> a perfect Tuesday <laughs> night for soccer here at the Walden Soccer Complex. It's uh, ideal soccer weather. 
Not too 70, hot, not too cold. About 68, I think, you know. This is Wade, one on one with Byer. Byer able to step it away for a moment. Good Calder pass. kept it alive, good pass. Go. One on one with there the keeper, go. Go and Cassandra Wade nets the opening goal of the contest. Just eight minutes gone by, and Becca Calder helped set that one up. She did, sure she did. That, that's, that's a phenomenal pass, and, and, and uh, it was great reception by Wade and, and the composure, great goal. They opened up right up to God, that, that defense, good pass. Uh, this is a really good start, I think. Uh, uh, that monkey is off of back, you know, for CSU. I think uh, th this might be a good game for, for us again. So CSU in the eighth minute on the board now. As Cassandra Way nets her fourth goal of the season, the freshman able to get one into the back of the net, Becca Calder, who doesn't contribute as much to the offensive side from her outside back position, but does well there and really played the absolute <laughs> perfect pass. Could not have drawn it up any better on that uh, pass. This is professional pass, you know, and reception and goal scoring, you, you see the professional teams do that. You know, that, that, that's a really high quality goal. And you have to believe now you have an opponent that came in here and has never been to this tournament, any of these players on this roster. Now you put them in a hole, you have a chance to try to bury them very, very quickly. Uh, I'm afraid that, that may happen. You know, it's, it's, uh, you know they, they can uh, hold on just so long, you know, but that the mental status, you know, start confidence starts to go down if they, if they get scored on one more time. This USC Aiken team has scored just 27 goals this season in 17 matches. So they have not been a team that has scored a ton. Here's their opening shot of the match. Fired toward the net that time by Taylor Simmons, the junior out of North Charleston, South Carolina. Simmons has one goal this season, and that was against Columbus State. She <laughs> scored the lone goal in that 3-1 loss. Let's hope that stays there. <laughs> She's not going to score anymore. But uh, defensively right now, I, I, uh, when uh, Calder pushed up and, uh, in this flank position, uh, Rowling came and covered that spot on that transition earlier. I, I like that. that, that uh, she's in perfect spot to, to plug any hole on, on defense. So Rowling is really, for me, the ideal spot for her and, and key player right now for CSU. And they've really been able to do some different things with her. At the beginning of the year, you remember she had to play that center back spot because Casey Davis was battling she injuries was hurt, and yeah. Jessica Sauer, they didn't completely feel comfortable with what she was doing back there in the center back spot. Now, though, Casey's healthy, Jessica's in good position, and that allows them to do so much more with her there, kind of as that defender that can move any which way and play on the ball. Abundant energy that she has, you know, so she can she can go from 18 to 18. She doesn't seem to get tired, you know. You want a player like that who can go full 90. Cranny will get to take a free kick here from near the box after the offside flag comes up. Just over 10 minutes into this quarterfinal round of the Peach Belt Conference Tournament, the number one and number eight seeds. And it's number one, Columbus State, off to a 1-0 edge thanks to a goal from Cassandra Wade. Good ball there, played down by Ashley Miller, lost it at the last second, though. Already one Peach Belt Conference tournament match in the books, and it was a big one as Shelby Rowling plays ball. a sweeping cross <laughs> looking for Corsioni. Wade with it back on her foot off to Pelletier. Her shot blocked that time by Byer, and they'll move off in the opposite direction. The one match, though, already in the books, Sixth seeded, but better than that, Clayton State took down number three seed Armstrong 2-1 sure in Savannah. I don't think it shocks anyone because of how good Clayton State's actually been, but by seeding purposes, it was a lower seed going on the road and winning. No, that, that's quality win for, for Clayton State. You know. They're a good team. I'm happy they they in it. Corsioni. They're going to say she was the last one to touch it, so the Pacers will have possession of it here. For the Lady Cougars, it's now about taking care of business the rest of the way. No more times, no more time for mistakes to happen. Now is when the crunch time goes for the rest of this season. They have their eyes set on the biggest prize that you can have, and you'd have to say they have as good a shot as anybody does the way they've played this season and the way they're set up this year, but 
it all comes down to what you do in the 90 minutes on the field. They, they sure do, you know. Uh, uh, for CSU, I'm not afraid when they get way up there in, in the quarter final, semi semifinals, NCAA tournament. I really want to see him perform well in these kind of games. You know, this is where you earn that spot going up because they surely have quality to be final four, no doubt in my mind. You know, it's it, it, it all comes down to these one game at a time that this uh, like landmine like this team could be, you know, I don't think so, but maybe next one could be landmine for CSU. The semifinals, the next match for one of these two, whoever is victorious tonight will head off to Evans, Georgia, just a suburb outside of Augusta, across on the other side of the state, right there on the South Carolina border. Friday semifinals, 5 and 8 o'clock. These two will play in the 5 o'clock game. Whichever one wins will play the winner of Lander and UNC Pembroke, the 4 and 5 matchup at UNC Pembroke, which will kick off a little less than two hours from now at 7 o'clock tonight. And winner of North Georgia, uh, they're, they're playing uh, against um, Clayton State, right? That, that's that that's North Georgia and Georgia College. And Georgia College. They're Georgia. playing. They kicked off the same time as we did up in Dahlonega. Okay. The other half. The winner of that one will get Clayton State. Clayton State, State yeah. In Evans on Friday. Then the championship set for Sunday there in Evans, Blanchard Woods Park, the site of the Peach Belt Tournament. Once again, the semifinals and the finals. And that'll be, I believe, a 3.30 kick for that championship game there in Evans. I believe this uh, little old team, uh, little old uh, CSU team can, can go far. You know, I believe they have quality. Uh, I like uh, how many offensive players we have they can score. And also our defense is uh, absolutely rock solid. You know, the, I don't think there's better uh, defense in the country than this CSU defense. They, they absolutely do everything uh, properly, they no nonsense defending. Casey Davis from her center back spot stepped in to clear that one away. Cassandra away in the midfield helping defend that one. CSU on the board already once. Four shots for the Lady Cougars to this point, just one for the Pacers. Here's an opportunity though, about 25 yards or so out. Put on the foot over on the far side of the field of Akila Ferbert, who's had a propensity to score some big goals this season for them. This one hit towards the net and caught cleanly off the foot of Sarah Moore. Malin Parsons able to just catch it out of the air on a rather light shot. Akila is uh, from uh, Bermuda, Warwick, Bermuda. She scored two goals earlier this year and a victory and a good one for them at Lenore Ryan, and then scored a game winner in overtime on the road at Flagler. So she scored four goals this year, and some of those have been very, very huge for them. This USC Aiken team actually had a really, really good start to the season for them. They had a draw against Wingate, who just won the South Atlantic Conference. Then they defeated Emmanuel College, and then they beat Lenore Ryan, who's right there in the top yeah. five of the region rankings. It looked like it was going to be a really landmark year for the Pacers and then things kind of sloughed off a little bit for them and it's been a bit of a rough go of things here of late. Well, they, they might be capable of... of well, they've uh, shown they're capable, yeah, so, just yeah. not consistent. Exactly, you know, we, we'll see what, 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 how this game, so far, you know, we threatened a couple, three times, you know, so um, I expect us to creating a lot more chances and, and uh, I think uh, CSU if they play ball a little bit faster offensively, if we play faster, we're gonna we're gonna break through again. Kiana Nicholson, the junior, subbing in and get the touch oh. over there on the far side of the field. She subs in in place of Ashley Miller, still alive with it, and bangs that one off the body there of Haley Pipkin to set up a deep throw coming up here for the Lady Cougars. I like that little step over move, you know, that, that psychologically affects the players, you know, they, basically she, Kiana telling her, hey, I can play soccer, I can do anything with the ball, so, so it, it, it's, uh, it's really psychologically affect the players, so you can set up next move that actually going to beat the uh, throw defender. Bounces off the ground, is able to get through before being headed away. Casey Rich also into the game here for USC Aiken. The freshman from Swansea, there South Carolina, as this one's touched off of Nicholson 
and Cranny picks it up. Rish substitutes in in place of Jenna Beauregard. That was a great idea again, right up the gut in the middle. She just, uh, it was a little bit difficult ball to handle, but you know, Kiana should have done better with that. The Lady Cougars have dominated the series between these two schools. Since CSU became a program back in 2004, that year they defeated USC Aiken 3-2, and they are a perfect 12-0 in 12 all-time meetings with the Pacers. And it's been a rather dominant series for them. 54 goals in 12 matches for the Lady Cougars against USC Aiken, and they've given up just four. So it's been big. But there was a long stretch for USC Aiken in this series where they had never scored. They scored two in the very first year of the program's existence for CSU. And then they did not score again until 2013. So they went eight years, eight consecutive years without scoring before they scored here on this field last year in regular season play. And then they scored another goal in regular season play earlier this season. You know, I, I don't think they're going to score. Uh, uh, that's why I'm saying a second goal will actually be decisive for, for, for this game. This is Corsioni on the near side. The reigning freshman of the year in the conference has played really well here over the last week. Calder trying to play another ball into the center, deflected onto the foot of rolling. The offside flag coming up. Ooh, it was a good wow. job by the... USC Aiken back line trying to all move forward. A gamble, L left but a gamble back that stayed pays back, off. You know, that, that was really hair off. You know, if, if Kiana just moved back a little bit, you know, she would have been uh, onside. That, that was a really close call because uh, left back stayed back. You know, the, she was a little bit lagging behind, and, and that, that's very dangerous. You know, that was that was very dangerous move. Uh, you give any p stepping up like that, you, is if you center back, you got to make sure you uh, everybody is in front of you. Good idea that time from Pelletier trying to slide that one through. Y you know, the way I see it, you know, the USA Aiken didn't came here to defend from get go. They, they're playing as much as they allow to. So now, now it's going to be open game, which is good for CSU. You know, it's, it's a they didn't came in regular season where they have teams, even when they're losing, they're still bunkering up, you know, they want to have honorable loss, you know, not to get killed here. So, but Aiken came in to play. Well, sometimes though in the regular season, it's okay, take the respectable yeah. loss, but in postseason yeah. play, there's only one result that matters. As Pelletier tries to cross, put it on the mark, but Cranny comes out to take it away before Corsioni can connect. It's win or go home at this point, so no reason to bunker up because you've already given up one, and in a bunker, you're not scoring any. That's true, you know, but, but uh, they, they know as well as I do, you know, if, if CSU gets that second goal, that that's going to be mountain, will be as big as Mount, Mount Everest for them to score two goals on CSU, which uh, it's going to be very, very tough. Lady Cougars have allowed just five goals as Pelletier swings it to the left for Marks. Good, Good touch into the center. Yeah. It's loose. Hey. This is Corsioni one-on-one, on oh one and God. she missed it wide to the left. One-on-one on one with the keeper, Cranny, and Corsioni chose to go left with it and hooked it. Yeah, um, she could have stopped the ball and asked keeper which side you want, left or right. You know that, That's how much time she had. You know. Corsioni, don't let me down, girl. Mandy Janowitz will come on as Kelsey Pelletier takes a seat. So CSU already with several pairs of fresh legs up top. Lady Cougars, though, to finish the thought, have given up just five goals since the month of September ended in October. And then if you look at it on paper, they really only gave up two because they took the three from Clayton yeah. State away. So it has been a very, very stingy defense throughout the entire season, but especially in the month of October. You know, I, I firmly believe, you know, that, that defense wins championship. That, that's a much wiser man that you and I uh, told, uh, told us that, and th that's the truth. Uh, Corsione, I can't get over that chance. <laughs> Sometimes, sh you know. She'll be seeing that one later <laughs> tonight. <laughs> yeah, and she'll she be hearing about it. You know, sometimes, just like in basketball, when you have wide open three-pointer, you know, and, and player misses badly, you know, and when it's under the pressure, they nail that one. I bet my life if somebody was sliding over there, that would be goal. 
So she would be finished naturally, quick, bang, bang, go. I, t I tell you, though, I went to, I made the trip with them to Dahlonega, Georgia, up for the matchup with North Georgia, who was ranked number four at the time, and it was right after the Lady Cougars had taken the loss to Clayton State. And I watched Nicole Corsioni that night play all 90 minutes at the forward position with complete, full 100% speed and maybe the best game she's played in her college career. Good pass found Nicholson. Nicholson shots blocked, and they'll thwart another rally. But Nicole Corsioni that night didn't get a goal, but she was by far the best player on the field that night. Yeah, I didn't see that game, but, but I heard about it, and that's exactly what coaching staff said. Uh, uh, you know, she, that game was just a huge win for CSU. Serious test against very quality opponent, you know, and, and uh, that, that, was, that was the best win of the year for me. CSU has a couple of really good ones on their ledger between North Georgia and the victory they had 1-0 over Rollins early in the year as Wade will go for a second, but she has that shot from the top of the 18, knocked down and picked up by Cranny Cassandra Wayne doing a nice job getting involved early on. Uh, I'm telling you that, that North Georgia is a little bit, it's a different game, different pressure, different mindset. I mean, the CSU was all under pressure that game, you know, the, the must win, because they were coming off of their loss, you know, to Clayton State and a very difficult place where North Georgia beat uh, Clayton State 5 nothing. And uh, CSU, that, that's a masterful coaching job by, by Jay Antlick and his staff. And it felt big. Being there in that atmosphere, it felt a little bit bigger than the rest of them. This one headed around the box. Corsioni was there. Instead, it'll be Marks. Her shot goal. deflected, and yeah. it's going to find its way <laughs> into the net. Taylor Marks puts one into the goal, and it's 2 nil. Lady Cougars. That was a great goal. You know, she, she, she guided that ball in. She didn't try to kill it. She, she really guided that ball in. It's, uh, it took maybe a little bit of deflection of a def defender, but she aimed for that far post, you know. As you coach, you always from that side, you, you, you're telling players, far post, far post, far post. And at and, uh, and that time, you know, she, she knows. She's been told that a million times, and that's absolutely wonderful goal that she scored. For Taylor Marks, goal number three for the sophomore midfielder. She's done a good job this season. Yeah, she, she, she is solid all year long. She is one of those that never gets the notoriety she deserves for how well she plays for this team. Well, that's just something that comes with being in the midfield. Exactly. Sometimes you don't get the praise, but you are as important as anybody could be. Yeah, you know, those uh, unsung heroes are usually the ones that, that, that wins you championship. I always take it back. There was a player here when I first started my job here, Catherine Lovin. She was a midfielder for this team, and she used to win all kinds of awards, and it was frustrating to write articles about her because she had no stats, zero shots, zero goals, zero assists, but she may have been the most important player on the field because she played that holding mid position. She was in charge of keeping possession. She was in charge of running everybody into the right spots, and she was as good as it got, but there was nothing to measure how good she was by. Exactly, no statistics, you know, for that, you know. So y y they have now, mis I mean, percentage of passes, percentage ball, uh, ball winners and, and, you know, stuff like that, you know, how many takeaways. And, but, you know, that, that position became, in the uh, in past probably 10 years, became very respectful, and those players in around the world started making some serious money, you know, and those with not now is highly paid, almost as high as anybody did these holding mids. job. used to be just kind of you find somebody to play that spot who cannot play anywhere else, you know. So now it's very, how soccer changed, that that um, doubles, that six position that that's holding mid spot, as I told you, that that, do you, you num numbering that that spot is kind of um, almost most important in soccer. Sub coming on here for USC Aiken. They'll send Olivia Stiltner, junior from Lexington, South Carolina, on. She'll go on in place of Taylor Simmons. So the junior will come off as Stiltner slides in. Stephanie Colwitz out there now, along with Tori Hood. They came in on that goal by Taylor Marks as Nicole Corsioni and Cassandra Wade came off the field. So 2-0, the Lady Cougars in front in this quarterfinal round of the Peach Belt Conference Tournament. Stephen Williams, Tony Frankovich here with you at the Walden Soccer Complex as the Lady Cougars trying to keep a zero in the loss column. The best start this program has ever been. You know, uh, 
I'll tell you a little secret. You know, they in in soccer, uh, if you want a championship team, you start with your with your defense first. You build your defense and then go to holding mid. And but sometimes, you know, it's nice to have a that's great shot by Stephanie. A little try, great try. Finally, she she trying to shoot from uh, outside of 18. Uh, but you know, sometimes some play some coaches and uh, they like more entertainment. They they build from at attack to the back. So they so, uh, but uh, in in serious business, if you want to be a winner, you start with your back four. Lady Cougars had a really really good defense a couple of years ago. Here, the back line back in 2012. Won them a lot of games. Got them all the way to the region championship where they took number one Armstrong to double overtime in a scoreless game down in Pensacola, Florida at West Florida. And as is the case each of the last three years, that one ended in penalty kicks and on the wrong side of things for CSU. Oh. Although you talk to them all and there's some of those seniors that have been through every one of those years that they've lost out in penalty kicks and they swear up and down to you. That is not <laughs> happening this year. So, you know, the moral of the story for them is don't take it to overtime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's in regulation. It feels a lot better. Free kick played into the center. It just, just uh, you know, bad curse, you know. If you if you don't have a luck, you know, it's a, one of those uh, John Elway or <laughs> curses, you know, when he couldn't win, you know, and Jim Kelly's curses, you know. CSU. That back line holding up so far. They've allowed just one shot to this point. It was an easy save for Malin Parsons. They've netted two on the other side, and you really can Play. exhale at this point, but not back off the gas. That's not Jay Hentlich's style. No, they're, they're playing with comfort. They're, they're, there's things they, they like to do. they definitely going to like to build and score quality goals, play quick soccer. Uh, they, they're comfortable right now, very comfortable. So, but 2 nothing is a very tricky score, you know. I don't care against whom you play, but if you give up a goal and then it becomes two to one, and it, I've seen it many times that, that that difference being uh, overturned. You know, it's almost sometimes we said as a coaches, it's a, players are more concentrated when they play with one zero than two zero. Two zero is that that false uh, comfort that they that that they have. I have heard Jay Emlick say it's the worst possible score to be winning by. Because of that reason, you get comfortable. This is Nicholson trying to scoot one, but she scoots it wide to the right. Didn't hit it cleanly quite well, but he has said it doesn't get any worse than 2-0 because you do. You feel comfortable because it's not a one-goal yeah. game, but all it takes is one shot, and then it becomes a one-goal yeah, game. Then momentum changes and everything, you know. But uh, having said that, you know, I'd rather be 2-0 up than down. Shea will be subbing in here. We got a jersey issue for USC Aiken. I know she notices, but you see <laughs> Akila Ferbert has her jersey on backwards now. She yeah. took it off to put on long sleeves, and now she's going to play for at least a little bit Entire with her name on the front side. <laughs> yeah. Entire coaching staff was uh, helping her put her shirt on. So she's trying to figure out when it will be a good stoppage, and now she'll try to turn it back as the ball scoots all the way to Cranny inside the box. Now she gets it turned around the right direction comic relief for you here in the it middle of a 2-0 <laughs> game. It was funny, you know, they're having a hard time putting their <laughs> coach uh, Susan came in <laughs> and helped her a little bit. Susan Bonica in her 10th season at the helm there in Aiken, South Carolina, so has been at it one year less than Jay Entlich has. That's one of the things about this Peach Belt Conference. There hasn't been a ton of coaching turnover at several of these programs. Several of these programs have had their coaches for a very long time considering how things go sometimes in collegiate athletics. It's a consistency, you know, you, you need that, you know. I mean, uh, uh, if you produce, you know, solid result and everything, that, that there's chemistry, they you know, people are comfortable doing things, you know, same way. You know, they're they, they changing here, tweaking whatever personnel you have, but, but system is there in a the place, you know. Everybody's comfortable with it. Look at the speed of Ferbert, who now has her name on the back side of her jersey. Outran Becca Calder that one, but Calder recovered. And they'll play it back in the other end as CSU has controlled possession. Good ball played forward for Tori Hood. And Tori 
has good speed to go with it. Able to knock that one off a defender. Corner. And that time it was Pipkin that got in the way. This is the what I want to see a little bit, these set plays, dead ball situation, see how CSU can uh, can deal. Th this is the game that you can learn and work on, you know, uh, on these these situations. And you, s you know Stephanie Colvitz can put the buzz that ball in that that's going to be a lot of heat on that on that cross so let's see what CSU they they have one Colwitz plays into the center it found the foot of Mandy Janowitz but Janowitz stung it high up over the crossbar good look good ball Janowitz just a little bit off on the angle as the Lady Cougars will send in Lindsay Law and Courtney Jackway Taylor Marks and Mandy Janowitz will come off CSU uh, has a few of these set plays when they pull uh, their forwards on the goal line and they step out or they run from, from penalty spot or top of the box. So, and a little bit edge if they can get it, you know, they'll take it because we didn't score many goals of, of, from these. Ball played forward, collision there between Jessica Sauer and Emily May who just subbed on. It looks like May caught the worst of that and she's a little slow getting up in CSU will play the ball out over the side so they can take a look at her and they will call the training staff and the assistant coach out to check on May, the junior out of Ackworth, Georgia. You look at how things closed out for the Lady Cougars though and it's been a remarkable season from, for them from start to finish. Jessica Sauer uh, is a solid rock. You know, she really, that, 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 that was really 50-50 ball and, and uh, sh she really came out of that uh, as a winner. Uh, it wasn't foul, you know, it, it was just 50-50 ball and she, she I think uh, that, that probably shot in the th thigh, I think. So they'll go out and they'll check on her. USC Aiken will come to the sideline, get a little water. CSU will regroup out there. For the Lady Cougars, though, it's been a great year for them. They have a ton of good wins on the ledger. You look, we've talked about they have a victory over Rollins, who was a top 10 team at the time, fell out of the top 10. They've worked their way back up to that point. They have a good win for them uh, over a very good North Georgia team, which you get the feeling those two are bound to see each other at least one, if not two more times before this season comes to a close. And then you look at some of the other victories, uh, a Tusculum team that was in the, the top 10 of the Those rankings, and they went up there and won 6-1. <laughs> it was big, man. The come-from-behind victory they had at Armstrong is yes. one of those that looms large as we get closer to this because what they've done in the regular season is set them up to where there's really not a whole lot for them to gain in this Peach Belt Conference tournament, and that can be a good and a bad thing. It's a good thing because yeah. you can just play free. You're not a team like USC Aiken, a team like Clayton State, they're using this tournament as the way to get to the next round. CSU doesn't have that pressure on them. They don't, but you know, they, they, they want that momentum to keep going. You know, they work very hard and, and, and uh, knowing these girls, you know, they, they really don't want to let down. They, they, they want to win every single game. And uh, th I think that's a correct uh, frame of mind, cor correct attitude. You know, every game you, you're playing to win, there's no letdowns. Because sometimes when you save yourself and trying to play, you know, slow, slowing down a little bit and, and taking your time, like saving yourself for next game, you know, you may slip that next game. You well got to play honest soccer, you know. That's why it's good to have the man, Jay Antlick, sitting there in the yeah. head coach's chair because you know he's been there a long time. He knows what this is like, whether these girls have been there or not, and he's not going to allow them to back off the gas pedal at all. No way. If, they, if he sees that, he's gonna. He has plenty of players to put in. So, so they, they're fighting for the spot. You, I can, I you can tell whoever came in, they're playing hard. <laughs> I, I think that that's the biggest thing about this team. You have to know that every time you step on the field, you better go after it because there's about eight other girls sitting on the sideline that would love to be in your position. And if you don't play well, he's gonna yank you right out of there, and one of those others is gonna come in and take your position away for a little while. You make two bad plays, you know, he's going to yank you out if he sees that you're slacking or something, you know, you're not concentrating and you're making mistakes, you know. He just have uh, enough players to do that, you know. He do doesn't have to be stuck with one player and say, oh, can she play? Can she develop a little bit? 
during the game, you know. And he doesn't have a star that he can't take off the oh, field. Exactly. Everyone is fair game out there. You're playing poorly or coming off. It's one of the remarkable things I was looking up the other day is this group, despite the fact that they're the second leading score, scoring team in this conference and that they do not have a loss to their name right now, there are eight teams in the conference with a goal scorer that has more goals than anybody on the Lady Cougar team does. The highest score on this team has just eight. Nobody yeah. has double digit goals, so it's not like there's one star that you can't take off because she's not playing well. And I think that plays more as a benefit than it, it does, does as a hindrance. It does. I, I remember watching last Thursday Florida State and, and Louisville football game and, and how sh uh, James Winston was spreading that well to all these freshman receivers that, that make that difference. CSU feeling the same way, you know, they, they have a lot of weapons. CSU with just over 10 minutes to go in this first half. Winding down a very good first 45 minutes. Seven shots for them. Two of them have found the net. One from Cassandra Wade. One from Taylor Marks. And now they're staring at another one. Tori Hood gets mm. off a left-footed shot. And that one's saved by Cranny, but you love it. Law to Colwitz Great. to Hood. It was one touch and go. Wonderful development of play. You know, the looking those little, what we call, tiki-taka soccer. You know, passing from foot to foot and uh, it was quick release to Tori this time, didn't take time for that little move and, and she fired a thing. Tori Hood now trying to drive down the right side, defended by Beyer. Beyer able to tackle it away from her and it'll go out for a throw, a substitution coming on here for the Lady Cougars. Shauna Griffin, the junior from Dublin, from Ireland. 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 Has a Irish counterpart in the net. She'll try to get one. Has someone from her home country there. Yeah. Hello, Ireland. So Calder comes in. Tori Hood, the one that comes off. Calder nice. plays one there right to nice Griffin. Turn. Byer, a big body down there in the center. Tough to get around, and she has good feet to go with it. She's done a nice job there at the center back spot. Griffin really has soccer mind. You know, she, she's a really quality, educated soccer player. She plays a little bit different style than the Lady Cougars do, and so yeah, it's been a tough match trying to incorporate her into what Jay Entlick's bunch has done. Exactly. But as soon as they hone it in and figure it out, look out, because as you said, she's very technically sound. She sees the game very well, and she's very, very smart, good with the ball know, on her yeah, feet. Exactly. You know, she, she's a really educated player. She, she, she knows what's going on, what to do. Calder plays one towards the back post. Ooh. It got loose That's for a second, but they're going to say a foul was committed by Ooh, Steph yeah, Colwitz of CSU, crashing into the cranny, the goalkeeper there, but a good ball put on the and back I, post. I don't think that that was, that was a foul because that keeper mishandled that ball. She, she, she didn't s capture that ball looking, uh, and, and yeah, I can call it foul, but Stephanie didn't know much about that. Colwitz with it now, working in the center of the field. Good, very good, that's Drops good passing. Wilby plays it out to Becca Calder, who's been good from this position all night long. She set up one goal, nearly set up a second nice. on the last one. Back heel touch, looking for Calder. Griffin trying to do so, and it was Griffin that touched it last, and a goal kick coming up here on the end will belong to USC Aiken with seven and a half minutes to go. I, I like that, you know, a little back heel, a little bit player you know you, you need soccer is art you know it's very physical but also it's art you know you got to do these things Shauna remind me or, or uh, Roy Keane uh, uh, um, uh, player who plays uh, Robbie Keane who plays for Galaxy play captain of Ireland you know he's exactly like that player a lot of trickery in it in, in his play tremendous player Shea will be able to win it away for a moment more coming up playing the long ball forward in Malin Parsons meet the ball you haven't seen each other in a long time yeah there you go my favorite phrase hello ball my name is Marilyn Malin has been very very good and it's kind of scary to think a little bit just where she'll be by the time her career wraps up because this is just year number one for her as a starting goalkeeper she was a starter for about half the season last year winning the job away from the OSHA Hatcher as a freshman and it has been all her job this season after that opening weekend she had mm -hmm. and then this follow-up weekend that she put together down in Pensacola shutting out Texas A&M Commerce, shutting out 
Rollins down there, one of the top teams in the country, and she has been so good this year, just eight goals given up. She's played nearly 1,400 minutes back there, and obviously it's not all her doing. That defensive back line is yeah, pretty yeah, good. But the old sophomore back there between the pipes is pretty good. Uh, she is, you know, she solidified that position. I think there's no doubt, you know, who's number one uh, at this point. You know, she she has to do something really, really terrible that's going to hurt CSU. You know, they, they may, Jay may p pull her out. But other, other than that, you know, in the game that matters, when, when score matters, she's solid number one. And, and that's good for keeper to have that confidence, not worry about, is I, are you going to get pulled or not? One of the things you love about Malin and the rest of these Lady Cougars is the work that they've done off the field as well. They had some awards that handed down to them last week. The COSIDA, the Sports Information Director Association, handing down their Capital One all-district academic teams. And it was half of the Lady Cougars starting lineup making the all-district <laughs> team. She'll be rolling on that along with Malin Parsons, Chelsea Pearson, Nicole Corsioni, Kelsey Pelletier, that's five of your starting usual 11 that made it. And out of Division I, Division II, and Division Three, the Lady Cougars had more school, players yeah. than anybody at any level make that academic team. And you're talking about starters, not the bench yeah. warmers. These are their best players that also take care of business in the classroom. Yeah, exactly. You know, that, that, that's, uh, that tells you overall what kind of person they are. You know, they, they, are, they are serious soccer players, but they are serious whatever they do. You know. And I, I think it translates to the field because they're yeah. able to take on so many things that Jay Edlick tries to do for them. And they're not just players. They're coachable, and they take to teaching well, and they can pick up some of these concepts that he tries to put in, and they learn them quickly, and it translates over to the field. I'm telling you, talking to some of these girls, they are a lot smarter than I am. You know, they, they are very, very bright people, you know, the, these girls. You know, I feel good about our country, you know, being around these young people. Here's a good run at things going for Hazel Kelly as she tried to make a move towards the near post of the net from the left side. And Sue Vonica not happy with yes. the way things turned out there for her junior from Goose Creek, yeah, South she, Carolina. She pulled that trigger way too soon. Calder was behind her. She could have carried that ball a little closer. Final three minutes, 45 seconds here of this first half from the Walden Soccer Complex in Columbus, Georgia, CSU. Practically emptying its bench entirely in its field players here in this first half. Jackie Hellett back out there now. Claire Belay coming on the for the first time. The sophomore out of Mableton, Georgia, coming on in place of Steph Colwitz. So they've pretty much used just about everybody in their field players. And one of the things we haven't talked about tonight, how about the last couple of weeks dating all the way back to North Georgia and including tonight, still going, they're playing without one Chelsea, of their captains yeah. and one of their forwards. Mm. And when she went down, she was the leading scorer in Chelsea Pearson. Yeah, exactly. You know, we we, we talking about what uh, Aiken missing and everything. Uh, we're missing pretty big one ourselves. <laughs> she, I talked to her. She's going, I think, Friday to doctor to see can she get released. So uh, that'll be huge if she gets released. She, she looks good to me. You know, she's a lot, uh, lot more comfortable. At this point, worked. though, how about the results they've been able to get without her, though? Yeah. They went to North Georgia without their leading score, and everybody kind of looked at it and said, uh-oh. Then they went down there, scored in the third minute. Kelsey Pelletier scoring a good goal. They made it stand up, and I think they proved to themselves that despite not having her out there, they're just fine. Yeah, they, they're just fine. Yeah, that's beauty about CSU, you know. That's, uh, everybody's missed, but nobody's missed too sorely. Jackie Hellett taking this one from Becca Calder, trying to cross, plays the cross off of the defender, Byer, and with two minutes or so to play here in this first half, Lady Cougars will take a corner kick for just the second time. That hasn't been much of the game in this one because they've been playing more in the middle than on the outsides. Let's see, can they get one of these uh, set plays put in? Shauna Griffin over to take this corner kick. A minute 45 and taking away in this first half. 2-0, Lady Cougars with the lead. This one ball. back post. Oop, Hellett oop. got ahead on it, and it's going to land on top of the net. Jackie Hellett, the tallest of the Lady Cougars, got ahead on it, 
but too much arc, put it too high in the air, but you have to like what you've seen exactly, on the two yeah. corner kicks so far from CSU. I do. That this was really good. You know, just uh, Heather should have been there. It, it's tough, though. You know, she, she jumped high in the crowd, you know, maybe guided down toward the ground, what we call offensive heading. Lady Cougars, as good as you could have asked for so far in this first half. 2-0 they lead. Cassandra Wade, Taylor Marks with goals, the eighth and the 24th minute of this match. And now they try to tack more on as we roll under 60 seconds to go in this first half. Quarterfinal round of the Peach Belt Conference Tournament. Lady Cougars hoping to buy a date with either UNC Pembroke or Lander on Friday. This is Kelly driving again, Good able to drop off. it off for a moment. And then it's playing towards the net that time Jessica by Sauer Olivia again. Stiltner. Jessica Sauer was right there yeah. in the center. Yeah, wow. Yeah, that was a good tackle. That was dangerous, da dangerous play right there. You know, it's uh, for, for CSU, but the defenders are, came again, up to task. Free kick, they, they got to hurry up. Free kick yeah. coming up Nine, with the clock ticking eight, away. Seven. <laughs> Jackie Hellett will get the shot <laughs> off, and it actually just goes over the crossbar. Not that it would have counted anyway, but got a free kick yes, off. Even if it was in a time, that ball was moving. He was about to blow the whistle and, and uh, c tell her to ball. But it has to be that ball. You know, she, she hit it while the ball was rolling. That's a good try, though. You know, good, smart thinking. So 45 minutes comes to a close here in Columbus, Georgia, at the Walden Soccer Complex. Pretty much everything Coach Jantlick could have asked for. Two early goals, put a little separation in it, and now you know he'll go back to the locker room and say we need a couple more, wrap this up, and get ready for a semifinal on Friday. I, I think so. They, they, they're going to score a couple more at least. You know, I think it's going it's to be a possibility. To go. Knowing how they do in second half you know, and everything, you know, that, that form, I think CSU going to even start playing a little bit uh, better second half. CSU leads it 2-0. They'll take the halftime break, head off to the locker room, and we'll take it with them. 2-0, quarterfinal round of the Peach Belt Conference Tournament. The Lady Cougars, the top seed, lead USC Aiken.
2-0 Columbus State, the fifth ranked team in the country and the top seed in the Peach Belt Conference Tournament leads eighth seeded USC Aiken here in the Peach Belt Conference Tournament quarterfinal round here at the Walden Soccer Complex in Columbus, Georgia. Stephen Williams back with you here alongside Tony Frankovich, my partner. Lady Cougars score a couple of goals, one in the eighth minute from Cassandra Wade, one in the 24th minute from Taylor Marks. And now we've reached that point as we talked about right before we went to break at halftime there that you get a couple more here, you coast it on in, keep a zero on the board, and you've done everything on Jay Antlick's checklist for the night. Exactly, you know, Jay, Jay wants to clean victory and, and uh, they, he doesn't want any blemishes in, in, uh, on defense. We're looking uh, across scoreboard, like you, <laughs> I ma you mentioned that everywhere is 2-0, so we kind of uh, on a track. Uh, so it's uh, you would expect maybe you know that that, that this is going to be blowout whatever you know but uh, playoffs and conference games evens out team in some way you know. 45 more minutes put on the clock. One more half standing between the Lady Cougars and the semifinal round of this Peach Belt Conference tournament. They're hoping to punch a date into the semifinals in Evans, Georgia, where they as we now know, would take on Lander University. I thought they, mm -hmm. they originally had scheduled to play at 7 o'clock tonight, but they went ahead and played an early afternoon contest there at UNC Pembroke. And so it becomes a 2-0 victory for the Bearcats, and they are now awaiting the winner of this one on Friday at 5 o'clock. Just in case you were wondering, it was CSU defeating Lander on this field on senior day, 2-0. About 10 days ago, as USC Aiken draws the opening foul from Columbus State to start off his second half. I think co Coach Vadika wants uh, their players to attack now. I mean, they go all for nothing. She, 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 she's aggressive there, and, and sh they're going to try to get the goal, you know. She knows as well as we do that the uh, next goal can... Uh, maybe change their fortunes. That's why I think CSU needs to start the same way they, they, they were playing and try to get that third goal as soon as possible. But, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I like to see this, that CSU is pressured right now, so to, to have that little bit of room behind that defense so we, we can work a little bit on counterattack, like this here, plenty of room, acres of space. Ashley Miller trying to track this one down. The race was run, won that time instead by Pipkin. CSU going with the same back line as you would expect. Larice Davis, Sauer and Calder from left to right. Taylor Marks, Shelby rolling back there along with Cassandra Wade in the midfield. And then it's the same three up top. Corsione, Miller, and Pelletier. Parsons in net. The same starting 11 for the second half as the Lady Cougars had to start off. Half number one. Great play by Sauer again. You know, she is sharp as a sable. Yeah. Won the ball, was comfortable with it, and, and uh, that's a good pass too by Shelby. Kelsey Pelletier had it taken away for a moment from her. And it'll start a counterattack going the other way for USC Aiken, who's trying to get on the board. That was not m not made, but uh, by go Gillespie, I think. Uh. This is Corsione playing to the center for Wade. If she could turn, there's tons of space to the other side with people moving that direction, but she never turned around and looked to the far side of the field. You know, I like technical soccer. I like these nutmegs, back heels, and so I like that, that kind of creative soccer. Because that, that's how I, how I was brought. <laughs> Tricky play, a little bit with trickery. This is Corsione just outside the box on the left side across, looking for Shelby rolling. Nearly got through to her, but not enough on it, and not quick enough that time was rolling to get to it, and Cranny instead winds up with it. She made phenomenal run out of that holding mid position. You know, th those those runs are most dangerous. She's unaccounted for because she's coming from, from deep and nobody can pick her up. They play it forward. Pelletier trying to get to this one, and she will before it scoots out over the corner. She'll swing, swing it in towards the middle. Ashley Miller had some trouble with it for a moment, and CSU will get to keep it on a deep throw. Again, though, as we talked about in the first half, you're in this 2-0 spot, so you want to see them 
get another one on the board here, kind of help put things away to kind of wrap things up. Y you sure do, but you really don't want to go crazy, f you know, to, to get that goal, you know, little by little, you know, ju just be patient, you know, be clean uh, in the back so you don't give up anything stupid really in the back that can put you in trouble, but they're doing perfectly right now. They're building up. There you go. That's a great cross. Miller into the center, headed away before it found the head of Cassandra Wayne. A really good ball, though, that time by the senior and Ashley Miller. Lady Cougars have won four Peach Belt Conference Tournament Championships, winning in 2006, 7, 8, and 10. The majority of this roster, though, has never tasted a Peach Belt Conference Tournament Championship because it did happen and what now is five seasons ago, there are a couple of fifth-year seniors on this bunch, Courtney Jackway, along mm -hmm. with Ashley Miller, that were on that 2010 team and saw what that was like. But the rest of them, it's uncharted territory for them. They have never been in a Peach Belt Tournament Championship winning team. The, these girls are really, you know, they, they go game game by game, you know, they, they really don't worry about that, you know, so th that's the beauty about this team, you know, they're not obsessed with, with, with winning. They want to win, but they want to win on their own terms. What, what's the old saying? Ignorance is bliss sometimes? Exactly. This is Pelletier. She'll strike, but didn't hit it cleanly and shot it way off wide to the right, but sometimes it's better off to not know. Yeah, exactly. You because know you don't know the pressure that comes with it. You don't know exactly what's all at stake. And so you got a young bunch that hasn't experienced a ton in the postseason, and therefore, you know what? They don't even know that there's supposed to be pressure <laughs> on them. <laughs> That's what you want, you know. Sometimes coaches work hard on that psychological aspect of the game, you know, to, to put uh, players in the right frame of mind, and uh, sometimes the team does it on its own. And this team certainly does it on its own. This is Pelletier working it to the left side, Ashley Miller with it. Miller, good ball for Corsioni, a one touch on the header for Wade, who lost control of it to clear it away. Becca Calder swinging up that right side. Swings it towards the center. If Corsioni keeps her feet there, it's probably a good opportunity at the net. Good move, though. Taylor Marks. There you go. Drops it off, finds the foot of Corsioni. Double team, Dave gets move. around the defenders Super with the goal. left foot. Super Nicole goal. Corsioni. <laughs> She didn't let me down. <laughs> you knew that she wanted one back from the last time, and she gets one there. And as you said, you miss the easy one, and then you make a play like that. Yeah, that was phenomenal goal. It was a big-time goal. I mean, uh, it's nothing easy about that goal. Quick cut and left foot finish, you know. So I, I, I really like that quick release, quick thinking, composure, concentration, and uh, an absolutely brilliant finish by Corsioni. So Corsioni able to pick up the goal. That'll be her seventh of the season. She's had such a good last mm. few matches or so. It's a really good move. She, she good cut. She and power post shot. It's uh, as always as I told you last time for the, for the previous goal by, by Marks. You know that they, they, they it was it's exactly that far post shot. Look for the far post. Uh, Corsioni who had just three goals through the first 14, or rather the first 15 matches of this season. Three goals. She now has four in the last three. Had two against Montevallo, had another on, s on Friday night against UNC Pembroke as this shot will wind up and look at pa Parsons. Wow. Despite the ball <laughs> being outside the post, Malin went up and just snatched that one like a defensive back. Yeah, like, so, like a panther, like interception there. <laughs> that was a great catch. For for a second, I was worried about that ball. Usually, you, you're gonna see that ball up in the air, you know, and takes uh, going to far post. You know, she she was really comfortable, no sweat at all. Well, she's probably happy to see the ball and coming her <laughs> way. It, it did as they I heard them coming out of the locker room after halftime, and they were all Woo, temperature cooled down just a little bit when the sun went down. So Malin back there able to stay a little warm that time going after that keeps the blood flowing. Good pass yeah. this time by Corsioni, Left Cassandra foot, Wade. With hey, the left good. foot, has the shot saved by the goalkeeper, Cranny, and finally cleared away. I wish she shot just a little bit sooner, you know. As soon as she get in the box, you know, take that shot. Pelletier stings one low on the ground. That's deflected away by Beyer. 
and a foul coming up against Larice knocks Moore to the ground. You know, for Marilyn, she 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 is absolutely master in concentration. You know, when she's not busy, you usually see keepers slip or something. You know, making mistakes. You know, but she's sharp for entire game, uh, uh, entire 90 minutes, full concentration, 100 percent. So so I'm not worried about being cool and everything. She, her mind is in right place. Uh, I can't really get over o over. Uh, Casey Davis and, and Jessica Sauer, they're absolutely so solid there in, in the center of defense. I absolutely love the way they play. I think, for me, they are the best two center backs in conference. Uh, there's no question asked. I mean, the, the way they play, I, I, I would take them on my team any day, these two, these two players. And, and that's where your defense starts. Mm -hmm. It starts in the middle, and then it branches out. The goalkeeper, the two center backs, and really that defensive center mid back there that Shelby Rowling plays. Mm -hmm. That's the bulk of it. Exactly. Then you have your Those outsides three. that are flying up and down the field. They're very hard to uh, CSU to break through the middle, you know, with these holding mids, uh, as you mentioned, Shelby, and, and, and two center backs. they just solid, solid, solid. Corsione coming to the near side. Just netted her seventh goal of the season. Goal kick. And she'll lose that one up over the end. You know, it, it's, it's important, you know, that, that you almost play with intu intuition, that, that, that you have that chemistry as uh, these two center backs, you know, Davis uh, uh, and Sauer, they, they have that chemistry. They know who, who to pressure, who to, who to cover, and they, they, they really know how to cover each other, how to work together as a team. And uh, they, that, that's part of it being so strong because they both are about equally good. Lady Cougars, we said after halftime the goal was to get in there, put a couple in the net, help run this one away, and they've already gotten one of those. 52nd minute, Nicole Corsioni scoring for the third consecutive match. And we play on here in a 3-0 game in this quarterfinal round of the Peach Belt Conference Tournament. Stephen Williams, Tony Frankovich with you. Cougar Sports TV, your home for everything Columbus State Athletics, and we're hoping that we'll see some good soccer from the Lady Cougars next weekend because that would mean we're right back here on a host site for the first and second rounds of the NCAA tournament. That was Corsione making nice turn. You know, I was waiting for that long run, that, that uh, plowing run when she runs like a tank and just plow everything in front of her. That was what you saw when we were at North Georgia. <laughs> she <laughs> was the biggest, the best, the fastest player on that field, and there wasn't anything that could get in her way. It was... Really impressive the way that North Georgia was able to keep her out of the net because she looked like a, a girl possessed that night the way that she was playing on the field. You know, they, they, North Georgia are playing physical soccer, so I think that's that's a, uh, that's Corsioni's kind of game. They yeah, said, bring it on, baby. That, right? You know, there's contact. You know, let, let's get it on. Get the gloves on. Let's play. The thing that might have been most impressive was that she played the full 90 minutes. You never see forwards, especially for Jay Antlick. You never see forwards play 90 minutes. She was needed. When, when, you know, when somebody's hot like that, I mean, you, you hear in any other sport, you know, when somebody's hot, don't pull him out, you know, pull her out. You Ride know, the let, hot let hand. Play. Exactly, you know. Because you may lose that edge if, if they're resting. Unless they unless they really need it, they, they're tired or a little bit banged up, you know, you can pull them out. But other than that, you know, when somebody's that hot, you know, you keep her on as long as you can. She found some extra energy that night, and she helped CSU to a 1-0 victory over a team at the time that was ranked number four in the country. It was just their second victory all time over a top five opponent, the other one coming against Armstrong last season, who was number three. Here's Pelletier with some space. Got past one defender, tees one Ooh. up and just over the crossbar and head in the hands that time for Kelsey as she knew she had an opportunity there. Kelsey, Kelsey, low, far post. You know, that, that's, again, you know, we come back to that easy. You don't need to go upstairs. You don't need to score a brilliant goal. Low, ba basically pass at low, far post. It's wide open there. You know, keepers are, you know, unwritten rule. I mean, it's a written rule, basically, you know, coaching. It's cover near post for keeper. Don't get beat on near post. So, so you got a, a lot more room to score on that far side. And Cranny is not a small goalkeeper either, so it's going to be tough like Clayton State. It's going to be tough to beat her over the top. You've got to go low, you know. You've got to find those corners. Larice hunts one into the center. Cleared off, but onto the foot of Shelby Rowling. 
And we've reached that point. That's good soccer, you know. We've reached that point where CSU's offense is in such control that the only two that have been playing back here lately are those center backs, Sauer and Davis, and Larice will come back as Sauer works forward. You watch this bunch, and one of the things about this back four is the chemistry they have now of playing together all season in that back line, and you watch Coach Rade Tanaskovich before the game starts. He's working with those four. As one yes, comes sir. up, everyone swings in to fill the hole. As working another comes shape, up, you exactly. move over, and they do a really, really good it's job of it. It's a repetition. You just have to drill it into and it became, becomes second nature to them. That They know right away if, if, if uh, Sauer's stepping up, Dave, Dave is dropping back, covering for her. You know, it's, it's you, you look at it right now. Becca yeah. called her up yeah. the field. Where's the defensive line? They're all midfield and further to the right to fill in that spot that Becca Calder just released out of. Exactly, we call the umbrella shape, you know, when, when fullback moves and, uh, and three others are in, in a line like you see it right now. There you go. Corsione into uh -huh. the center, uh -huh. weighing a little bit late on the run, still winds up with it on the top of the 18. Good Leaves it off for Larice, looking for a cross. Took a little bit too long time, but it was wonderful overlapping run. You know, she, she should cross it right away, you know. They get it back to her on the side. Another cross that's cleared out as CSU continues to control possession here in this second half. Susan Vodica beneath us here, just storming up and down the sideline, frustrated with the way that her Pacers are handling possession right now. Now though, the Pacers of USC Aiken will get an opportunity, a rare one for them, down here in the attacking third of the field. About a third of the way through the second half. Ball played into the center. Sauer will head it away over to the side. It's one back though, the Pacers with it. Stiltner plays it back, finds Tiley. Stiltner plays it back to the center. Ferbert, who we've already talked about, very dangerous, but Shelby Rowling doing what Shelby Rowling does, coming over and taking it away outside the 18. The way those two center backs, Davis and Ro uh, uh, Davis and and, uh, and uh, Sauer play, remind me on Jordan and Pippen. Remember when they play defense, they get serious and start defending. They said, Phil Jackson unleashed Dobermans. You know, these are our Dobermans there. You know, they. Well, it's quite a pair back there in the center. CSU, a zero on the board so far. They've allowed just three shots. By USC Aiken, Malin Parsons has made a save on two of them. One of them wasn't on target. And the Lady Cougars now look like they're ticketed for a date with Lander coming up on Friday if they can finish off the final 29 minutes of this. A complete line change up front for CSU as they'll go Tori Hood, Mandy Janowitz, Kiana Nicholson as Corsione Miller and Pelletier come off. Kelly comes on for USC Aiken, and it's Casey Risch that comes off for the Pacers. This nightmare for, for coaches, you know, to prepare to, to play CSU and, and uh, specifically for per particular player, when, you, when you're looking at your key player, how are you going to prepare with six forwards? You know, like which one, you know, how are you going to adjust? Well, They're all different. And there's six, yeah. and Chelsea Pearson's yeah. not out there. Jackie Hellett yeah, still exactly. has time to go out there. So there's still several forwards that we haven't even seen yet. How are you going to cover a every, you know, when you, when you coach, you, you cover every player, you know, important players, but how are you going to cover six players, you know, and, and get your defender in their mind, oh, Kiana plays like this, you know, Chelsea plays like that. <laughs> it's and you're almost talking impossible to, to prepare. You and know? you're talking about covering forwards, and how about the fact that two of the goals scored in this one are by midfielders? Midfield. <laughs> Cassandra Wade and Taylor Marks, better. midfielders, netting goals in the first half. Corsione, the forward, with one here in the second. That's the thing about this Lady Cougar team. There is no one that can break this team. There is no one that really takes over for this team. It's just a very wide group effort, and that's what makes you think they have as good a shot as anybody does because any one player doesn't make or break this team. Not really, you know. Uh, I would tell you, you know, those two center backs and goalkeeper are probably three, the only one that, that uh, I mean, he, Jay can probably put uh, rolling back in center back, but, you know, these two center backs uh, that you're playing and, and, and goalkeeper, I think those, those three are the ones that, that uh, 
only ones that are irreplaceable in my opinion. Summer Culberson, the final field player to come off the bench in seed time. And I was, it was funny, I was talking with uh, graduate assistant Mary Manson the other day and they were, she was talking about Summer who is the freshman out of Duluth, Georgia, who hasn't seen as much time because she's a defender and that back line's pretty set right now. But he was, she was saying that you know, they just discovered the other day, as you saw there and you're going to see here, Summer is the strongest of their players in this throwing in position. And Jay Entlick had no idea, just discovered it about a week ago in practice. And now you see she's in this position coming in at times, and she can launch that ball with two hands towards the box. Yeah, because uh, in all reality, you never see it, you know, in training, unless she takes the ball and all of a sudden you discover it, but she never told, probably told him or, or anything like that. You know, it, it's kind of thing you, that you don't even know. You s a lot of times you don't really care. And all of a sudden you discover that's actually your throwing is a weapon. See how she does here. She tosses that's that one in, cool puts one it right too. on the foot of Rowling, who had it taken away and cleared off at Culberson is one that has really actually earned a little more playing time with Jay Inlick here of late. The tough part is that you don't know who to take playing time away from. When everyone's mm -hmm. playing well, especially when you go on the road, you can only travel a certain number. The NCAA only lets you travel 18, a certain number of players. How many players do they uh, I think they can travel uh, around 22 or 23. 22. 22, I think, is the number, but they have 26 players. Mm -hmm. They can you know, they generally leave a couple of goalkeepers behind and things like that, but you have to leave a couple of others mm -hmm. behind, and it's unfortunately that's sometimes tough, people yeah, get left uh, out. Exactly, that's tough. It's part of the game, you know. It's it's a, a professional game, you know. You can take only 18 players. <laughs> and, and you have 28 on your roster, so you leave 10 at home. And one of the things they've tried to do is they're doing right now, experimenting a little bit, is putting her in the midfield. She came here as a defender. And so they thought she was going to play, but they keep her in the midfield at the moment as Kiana Nicholson stung mm. something and is a little bit slow getting up off the turf, but see how she will play on. I think it Looks like she connected legs with yeah, somebody as she played that ball forward. Yeah. They'll stop the clock and go check on her. But this is an opportunity in the 3-0 game to see, like, yeah, Culberson get out there, get her feet wet in the midfield, and see maybe you find a weapon in the middle. Yeah, you know, did this as you discover things and uh, when 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 – game next game become really tight and after that everything after this will be very tight so so in case somebody get hurt or something that you have your B and C plan and Culberson brings something that you mm -hmm. can't teach and that this team doesn't really have and that's size yeah she's, she, big girl. <laughs> she's the same size as Jackie Howitt yeah. listed at 5'10 five five ten, ten, yes. and nobody else that tall on this roster so it's one of those things you can coach them to play well you can coach them to do things you want them to do. You can't coach them to be tall. Yeah. Is she uh, She definitely of upset plays. You know, you would think, you know, she, she got good size in there. She can make herself really. <laughs> and she'll toss this present. one in again, Jay wow. Entley. <laughs> just making her the permanent throw-in player at the moment. Taylor Marks with plenty of room to work off to her left. Already with one goal here tonight, her third of the year. Taking in a deflected ball, putting it into the far post. CSU has hit far post on a couple of occasions so far. It's been a very workmanlike business approach for the Lady exactly. Cougars tonight, and they've done exactly what they were asked to do. Tori Hood plays it to Culberson, and Culberson doesn't look like she's used to being that far <laughs> up the field just yet. Boy, that, 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 that ball was really begging to left foot one timer shot. Rebecca Calder over there. Rebecca Calder is becoming really solid player on that right back. She also, you know, making those runs, assisted on the goal and everything. She she she's really settling good on that right back and is solid, solid player for, for right side. So I've heard people talking, some of the scouting reports about this Lady Cougar team and Opposing coaches, is, uh, opposing coaches are noticing what Becca Calder is doing as well. Mm -hmm. She is somebody that they have keyed on and paid attention to and has spoken highly of when they watch this CSU team in person and when they watch them on film. He's a uh, very offensive uh, outside back, wing back, you know, so she, she will go up, you know, obviously they did that as a handball there. 
So she's open a lot, you know. If they can hook that ball to her, uh, is she's right now wide open, you know. That that that's uh, acres of space over there. I right know can can Casey hit that ball. <laughs> and you look at Becca and you think she, there's no way she can be a defender. She's just listed on the roster at five foot two. She may be that tall, but <laughs> there's there's nobody that's as feisty as she is, and she fights and battles and scraps and claws and plays a lot bigger than Great five ball. foot two. There you go. Nicholson what getting great. loose, uh, 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 touches it. Tory Hood ball. will be the beneficiary <laughs> of it. Offside flag not up. No, Nicholson to Hood, and it's 4-0. That, that's a great, uh, you see, she, Kiana start, tried to score that goal, and perfect, that, uh, that she delicate touch that she normally knows how to do it. And uh, obviously, Tory Hood was uh, following that, 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 that play, and, and uh, she got rewarded with that, staying with the play. It's a real quality goal once again. The Lakers only scored by number four, Tori Hood, and assisted by number 25, Kiana Nicholson. So Tori Hood picks up the goal, the perfect touch from Nicholson. Hood could not find a more wide open, easy goal. About five feet out in front of the net. No goalkeeper there between her and another goal. And for Tori, that's the fifth of her junior season as CSU continues to find different weapons to put goals on the board. You know, uh, for going back to, to Calder, uh, actually in modern soccer, you know, a lot of these new wing backs, you know, because they play dual role. They don't really play anymore just defensive defensemen, you know, they, they, they also dual role. They are Tucker over there. Actually, the, you know, they, they, they are a little bit smaller, more agile, and, and, and they go, you know, so she's modern, modern outside wing back, you know. Now Nicholson again looking for one of her Whoa. own and rips it with the left foot on the turnaround and shot it just wide of the mark to the right. That's one thing you never will say about Kiana, and that's that she's shy. Mm -hmm. She is not shy to take a shot at the net. Wonderful reception, quick turn, quick shot. Uh, if you notice today, com comparing last game we did here, you know, they, uh, they're shooting quick. They're shooting, they're re releasing the ball quick, quick, touching and shot, touch and shot. So that, that's good to know, you know, that that's uh, in the beginning of season, you, you remember how frustrated I was, you know, with <laughs> having too many touches, want to wanna shoot in their comfort zone, you know, and now they're shooting out of their comfort zone, and they're more successful. Steph Colwitz along with Shea Wilby back on to the pinch here for the Lady Cougars. This is Nicholson, chips one towards the center, touched it off to Culberson, tried that one touch with the left foot, just the spin of it, threw it a little bit off, but the idea was there. Yeah, she, she tried to play that in the, in the middle, that, that one touch, just drop it in there is what we, ca what we call uh, to find the target. You know, She didn't have a target to open, but sometimes you just dump it in there and it may find the target. Wasn't a clean pass to her, so it had some weird spin too mm -hmm. as well. And just it was hard to shoot that ball, you know. She. This is Culberson now. Played a good ball forward, but nobody was there to receive yeah. that one. You know, that, that also is ball in a space, wh 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 what I just mentioned, you know, finding the target, you know. It's kind of uh, target. If target's not, not available, actually making the target, make the target. It's like in football, throwing your receiver open. Exactly. Play, your, br play exactly. your target open. That's correct. This is Calder with a lot of room to work on that right side. Good. See, and she played that ball. I, I want her to go up and, and get, you know, overlap or run in the middle a little bit. Sometimes players, when they play wide, they stay wide. They think they don't. But if somebody comes, li like in this case, you know, uh, when we have player going on to, 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 to her spot, when she runs, then she has to go in the middle. It, it, it really pro uh, gives a lot of trouble for the end. It, it, it this balances defense. When you have that run from fullback, you're running in the middle, and they don't know who's going to pick you up. It's CSU already have three forwards, you know. The I, I want to see uh, if she can try that. When she make that pass, and she runs straight in the middle. Mm -hmm. And this kind of game that you can do that, you can, you can take chances. This game playing out very similarly to the way the one did in Aiken, South Carolina, a little over a month ago. Lady Cougars scored three early goals, gave up one late. They haven't done that tonight. Jay Lick will hope that they finish this one off without giving one up as that shot was sent high of the mark, fired towards the net. But 
This one playing out just the way you would ask them to. A couple of goals early, separate yourself. A couple more goals in the second half, put even more space between you and not put a ton of pressure and a lot of strain on your body, on your legs, and a lot no, not a lot of mental stress either. They, they definitely, you know, they, this is quality victory. You know, they, they, they're routine, I would say, victory. You know, there's nothing routine in soccer, but th this is as close as you can get to it. Perfect, 4-0 victory, clean cut victory, domination. They're doing some stuff, you know, they a wonderful goal, a lot of good plays. Lagrese off to Wilby. Wilby plays it out wide there for Janowitz. She'll start yeah. working with it offensively there. Good dribble back into the center. Gives it up for Colwitz. Oh, it didn't look completely committed to that shot. I see a little bit uh, lack of confidence right now. I mean, uh, she she don't play as much, you know, now. So, but uh, she's a terrific player. We, as we saw that the Clayton State game, the great goal, you know, just Nicholson. hopefully she's going to open up. With it now to Colwitz. There you go. Steps it right off. Nicholson with some shifty moves there. Finally what does a great get the pass. shot. Ooh. Has it just wide Look of Shea there. Wilby. Becca called her up from her outside <laughs> back. That's what I want to see. She, if that was ball a little bit closer to her, that she was in perfect spot. She made earlier run like half uh, toward. There you go. Okay. Into the Oof. center, blocked. The Oof. shot by Nicholson, still loose. Outside. Will be with it. And the offside flag is coming up. Calder almost made that run toward the middle uh, that, that uh, um, earlier that uh, before the play that she had a chance. You know, I wish she continued that run, you know, and make that that, 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 that forward that, that she marking over there was really lagging behind. She was wide open. If that ball was a little bit more friendlier to her, that would be goal for her. I think she deserved one. CSU committing the foul there on the goal kick. 16, 15 and counting here in this second half. And we erred a little bit earlier when we were talking about Lander and Pembroke. They do kick off at seven. So that score updated on the score on the schedule <laughs> page for a second, and then they took it away. So apparently they are gonna kick off at seven. So opponent for the next round still to be determined. They may have our score listed over there. <laughs> Somebody jumped the gun a little bit somewhere. Oh, we're going to cut him slack a little bit. It's internet. We all make mistakes. That ball played off of and last touched by Caroline Gillespie, the senior from Greenville, South Carolina. And now CSU will go with a few subs. And one of those will be a new goalkeeper coming on. Malin Parsons' night is done. She put 75 more minutes in the book without giving up a goal. That'll run her streak to 390 without giving up a goal. And in place of her, we'll see Miosha Hatcher. The junior out of Atlanta, Georgia, the starter for the first half of last season. And you have to like her spirit and her yeah, energy exactly, because she lost know, that spot. She's a good kid. You know, but yeah. she's still here day in and day out, and she contributes and is ready at a moment's notice to go in. She, she got to have the right frame of mind because you know how this game, you know, you never know when you're going to need her. You know, if she, she can, you know, s step in when you need her most, you know. It's great to have someone like Malin Parsons as your starter, but it's even better almost to have someone like Miosha Hatcher yeah. as your backup because you know that in a pinch you have someone to go to. Yeah, your starting goalkeeper can be phenomenal, but if there's no backup and she gets hurt, there's there's problems. You know, I think, you know, that they were really even as coaches were really undecided you know the game uh, when they uh, when we played uh, when she gave up a goal coming late uh, out of the goal line from that point on you know that 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 Marilyn took over the job but in quality I think they are even you know it just Marilyn, Marilyn has just <laughs> cemented that starting spot it was there for grabs and Marilyn took it sometimes you need that one lucky break or unlucky break you know to, to to turn tide your way when they went into that mount olive game mount to start olive, the season that's, that's what it was it was a 50 50 split malin parsons was going to play the first half miosha hatcher was going to play the second and that's how they did it 
But ever since then, it's been Malin Parsons in net as the starter. Miosha getting mop-up duty as she is right now. But another, but you, you get a chance as the offside flag comes up once again. You get a chance, Malin Parsons can get over on the bench. That's an extra 15 minutes, less of wear and tear on her, getting set for mm -hmm. a second game yeah. in a week, and then what they're hoping is a third game in about a five-day span. No reason to risk her, you know. I mean, see, Becca Calder is out as well, you know, so g give her a little bit of break. I think she would be re really happy if she had scored a goal. Claire Belay out there on that outside back position. What a great pass. Finds Nicholson. Nicholson off to right. Wilby. And the tackle in the center and last touched by the Lady Cougar senior. It's, uh, you know, the, uh, Nicholson is so comfortable under the pressure edge of the box. She's in comfort zone, you know. She, she reminds me, you know, when they say Roberto Duran, you know, when, she was in, when he was in a ring, you know, he's in his comfort zone. That's his home, you know. Everything outside of his life, outside of that ring is mess. But, uh, you know, it could be. But in that ring, you know, in that little space, space that that she I'm not saying that that's <laughs> outside <laughs> of her life <laughs> but uh, what I'm saying that in the little space over there she is a king yeah. let's reset the field for you here for the Lady Cougars because it has changed quite drastically from where we were to start the half your back line now includes Andy Larice, Lindsay Law, Jessica Sauer and Claire Belay from left to right Steph Colwitz in the midfield along with Courtney Jackway and Shea Wilby and then up top Mandy Janowitz, Shauna Griffin, and Jackie Hellett, the three Lady Cougars up top, as Jay Entley continues to pull different white jerseys off that bench. The Lady Cougars setting a date with either Lander or UNC Pembroke on Friday, 5 o'clock in Evans, Georgia. Blanchard Woods Park, once again the site of the Peach Belt Tournament semifinals and finals. The Lady Cougars will try to capture their first tournament championship since 2010. This is a bunch that just won its eighth regular season championship in 11 years, which is remarkable, a program that started from the ground floor and in 11 years has won eight regular season championships here. And then they'll go now for a fifth tournament championship, but some heavyweights awaiting especially on the other side of the bracket, as it looks like North Georgia is going to get through. And it would be North Georgia and Clayton State. You know Clayton State would like to have another chance at that matchup. <laughs> Didn't quite go their way the first time. Yeah, uh, I, I bet they would. You know, it's uh, just uh, very hard to play against North Georgia. You have to know how to play because they're playing that uh, direct style. You know, you, you have to be able to defend that. You know, if, uh, CSU, <laughs> perfect 10 in that 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 game you know they, they play perfect 90 minutes defensively Clayton State needs to do that <laughs> as well North Georgia doing just about exactly what CSU is 5-0 for the Nighthawks on top of Georgia College in the one of the other quarterfinal matches Clayton State took down Armstrong 2-1 and now you're watching Jay Entlick experiment a little bit Summer Culberson comes back in she'll play center back now and how about Ashley Miller, who's usually a forward, started both halves of this one at forward. She's now playing Love. outside back. I mean, th this is good spot, especially if you're attacking Claire. You know, you can go up. Uh, look at that move by Shauna. Jackway plays it to the right, looking for Helen. Off to Griffin, <laughs> and Griffin just didn't get it cleanly. And you can see a little bit frustrated with yeah. the fact that she didn't get it. Yeah, she, she again received the ball with, with, her, with her heel kind of slide the ball behind her planning foot that was, that was really uh, I like that kind of confidence Griffin same uh, is uh, same like uh, Kiana they, they they similar type of player they like a little bit trickery and everything they comfort you know under the pressure CSU a 4-0 lead on its way Ooh. to victory number Ooh. 17 on the season. Janowitz trying to tack Ooh. on another, goes far <laughs> post, <Super goal. laughs> and Mandy Janowitz makes it 5-0. North Georgia, if you can do five, we can do it too. CSU in the 81st minute 
adds another one to its sheet. Janowitz, a great individual effort there, just stepped right by the defender, set herself touch, up touch. well, and didn't wait long. Just blasted away, and where'd she go? Far post. Far from that. <laughs> good, good. Mandy Janowitz now with seven, keeping pace with Nicole Corsioni for the second most on this team. It was really, really quality, high quality. Every single goal is just high quality. You know, not no cheap goals. No, you know, and the way CSU playing, uh, we don't playing cheap soccer. You know, we playing expensive. It's everything is technical. You know, quality. In, in whether we finishing, building up the play, we playing expensive soccer. We don't play the cheap soccer. Bang and run. 5-0, the Lady Cougars putting on an offensive clinic tonight here at the Walden Soccer Complex. I kind of felt it's going to be five. I'm thinking that this relatively second lineup, you know, and they're still knocking it around. Miosha Hatcher coming out, touching the ball for the first time. Lindsay Law doing yeah. the shielding that time. That was a little bit. <laughs> a little precarious for a moment <laughs> it there. It was precarious, very precarious a second because there was no decision between both of them. Uh, so uh, that's what you, you, you don't play uh, often, so sometimes there's lack of communication and, you know, that, that chemistry that, that, that other players, you know, starters have, you know. Uh, it's tough. You gotta hand it to to these girls who are playing here. You know they they need to perform. You know they they really want to badly to perform, and these things happen. We didn't pay for it though, which is good. CSU seven minutes Oof, from closing goes. out as Griffin. That's a hand in the face. You know. Yeah, taken down right there in front of the CSU bench. She'll hop up though. A tough customer. CSU though is now. Seven minutes away from picking up shutout number 11 of the season. You look at it, nine times now in their 11 years, they've had double-digit shutouts. They didn't have double-digit shutouts in year one, and they didn't have double digits last year. Every other season, they have had at least 10 clean sheets on the uh -huh. year, and this one, if they can finish off the last six and a half minutes, will be their 11th. As that time, Courtney Jackway got a header towards the net but it's picked up by Cranny for another save. Th that's amazing stat that you just mentioned, you know, that uh, I don't care what level you play. Like, uh, that many shutouts, and uh, you know how hard that is. Especially because you know the competition yeah. they're playing. Jay Entlick doesn't schedule easy, easy. opponents <laughs> when he gets the opportunity in the non-conference. He takes on the best of the best, mm. and they still refuse to give up goals. Jay, really, as long as I know him, he, he really don't care, you know, whom he plays, you know. I mean, you bring Real Madrid, they're going to say, yeah, sure, we're going to play him, no problem. You know? Well, you look at just all you need to do for evidence is look at last season. Last year, they opened up with two games here in their co collegiate invitational, and then actually they opened up on the road with number one and number two at West Florida, and yes. then they came home for two games, and then they went right to number three, Armstrong. So within five <laughs> matches, they had played preseason number one, preseason number two, and preseason number three. Yeah, we don't want to mess around with playing uh, <laughs> those. <laughs> his first, his first classic. Number he went 305. Yeah. <laughs> the first classic he went to down at West Florida, number one, two, three, and I believe CSU was something like 20. They were the odd man out in that group, and that's tough to say that they were outclassed there by ranking mm -hmm. in that matchup that they had down there when Grand Valley was there. Mm -hmm. West Florida was there, Armstrong was there, as we have a player Same, down. You know, usual suspects, you know. But, um, that, that can just make you stronger, you know. And, and uh, the thing of it is, you know, they, uh, other teams, they know that, that about Jay is quality coach and he's going he's gonna to bring strong team. So regardless, like this year, what we were to start with, 26th or something like that preseason, you know, but uh, everybody in the country knows we are not 26, that, that we are somewhere of around top 10, top 15. You know, everybody knows. J they just don't know how good CSU will be in that, but they know they are top 10, top 15 because uh, Coach Jay makes it 10 spots easily. 
with his coaching, you know. CSU climbed to as high as number two in America when they were mm -hmm. still without a loss going into that Clayton State match. That was just a couple of weeks ago. They fell down all the way to 17 after that loss to Clayton State, but they have gradually climbed their way up, and they find themselves in the latest poll that came out today, number five in all of the country. Mm -hmm. Just four teams standing between them and the top spot at this point. Wisconsin Parkside, East Strasburg out of Pennsylvania, Barry from down in Florida, which would be a potential NCAA tournament matchup if they get far enough. And then Minnesota State Mankato holding on to that top spot, an undefeated team from up north. You know, I didn't see them playing. I don't know did the Minnesota play anybody from down south. You know, I would like to see them, how sh they're going to do against a competition like we playing, you know. So sometimes they p teams come from highly ranked and you don't know what they have they might be really good but it's kind of unknown to us you know I guess people who rank team they know better you look ahead a little bit here for CSU towards the NCAA tournament which obviously is, a co is still a week away they take the top six teams from the southeast region as that ball is crossed all the way but a flag put up that time we'll head it back the opposite direction Three automatic teams, the winner of the Peach Belt Tournament, the winner of the Conference Carolinas Tournament, and the winner of the South Atlantic Conference Tournament. So those three and three at-larges, which right now look like you can have one or so out of the South Atlantic, and then the Peach Belt will probably account for the others. you got to figure Columbus State and North Georgia are firmly in. Armstrong they should, be, should yeah. be in. They yeah. were three in the latest ones. That would be a huge fall for them if they fell out. And then it's full of non-Peach Belt schools from there. Wingate, Lenore Rhine, some of the usual suspects that yes, you see there. Yeah. They're right in the mix. Newberry seems to be the class of Conference Carolinas right now. And then, of course, every year the South gets paired up with the Southeast region. And so you'd have to think about some of the teams on that side. Barry, Rollins, Tampa, some yeah, of those there, schools. There's some good schools down there. You know, Barry always, you know, you, you, same like you, down there, greater Miami area, you know, you can, you can, you know, they can have some good, good recruiting ground down there. The players, huge area, a lot of Latin players down there, so. CSU will pick up the foul. Claire Belay, the one who commits it, and so with three minutes showing on the clock, a late free kick chance coming up from about 28 yards or so outside, staring at the net. You like a. Uh, a little bit of character of, of, of this uh, USC Aiken team, you know. Susan Vadeka coach, you know, she's excited like game is really tight, you know. They they really have good character. They 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 good honest team, you know. They playing hard as hard as they can. Yeah, that's good, Miosha. That was great intervention there. It was difficult ball between two forwards and and she made a good play there that that answers your question a little bit. You know. And not only yeah. did she make the play, but she kept the ball in the field of play, so it didn't go out for a corner. Yeah, As USC me. Aiken will check a couple of people on, I believe they're taking a couple of their seniors out, Caroline Gillespie coming off the field, because this will end up the USC Aiken season for 2014, and so the seniors that are on this roster, that will wrap up their playing careers in a Pacer uniform. So Susan Vodica taking some of those off the field here with about two minutes to go in their playing careers, trailing 5-0 in this conference tournament game. CSU has done everything they could have hoped for so far tonight. They came in huge favorites, a program that had never beat them at any time in women's collegiate soccer. And they came here with, as you said, everything on their shoulders because there was nothing to lose for USC Aiken and all they've done has put five goals on the board, allowed just four shots, and none of them very great looks at the net. And they've kept a clean sheet now for nearly 89 minutes of action. And it's been nearly a perfect game for them. I got handed to 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 USA Aiken too. They they play on a soccer. They they play they play the best they can, you know, they just don't have enough Jimmy's and Joe's when we say and CSU have plenty, you know. So. They play it down the right side. Janowitz in the final minute, the same move she just scored on. This time she drops it off for Shea mm. Wilby, who didn't yeah. quite get it hard enough to get it beyond Cranny, who makes another save, her seventh of the night. Got to be a lot firmer shot there. That was perfect. 
drop for her layoff of that that ball. Perfect spot. She really should have scored on that one. And Janowitz, though, showing you that she can make the same move and do two th different yeah. things with it, score and distribute. That is, you know, she, she bringing a lot of maturity to her game. You know, when we saw her earlier in the year, you know, she was all go, 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 you know, no cuts, you know. no. Now she looking, cuts, quick releases, you know. And some games she looked really good, uh, like Mount, Mount Olive, I believe, game. And some, some yeah. games she looked, uh, you know, a little bit struggling on the field but now she she really knows her spot and Six, she's comfortable five, four, the three, clock ticks down three, and the lady one. cougars 17 0 and 1 on the season as they will march on to the semi-final round of the peach belt conference tournament that will come your way friday five o'clock in evans georgia and as we said business-like Workmanlike and really just did everything you could have asked in 90 minutes of soccer here. Professionally done, you know. She went in the office, did a job, and done honest 90 minutes. And semifinals, here we come. Five goals for the Lady Cougars. Cassandra Wayne got it started in minute number eight. Becca Calder played the perfect pass right onto the foot of Cassandra Wade, and the freshman found the back of the net to keep the scoring started. Taylor Marks cleaned up a ball that had bounced around the box. She went far post and found the net for her third goal of the season in minute number 24. And then from there, after halftime, Nicole Corsioni with a phenomenal move, able to beat the keeper for her seventh. And then Kiana Nicholson with one of the better plays of the entire night. The light touch she had played it perfectly off, and Tori Hood just had the easy kiss into the net for the goal. And Mandy Janowitz finishing the night off dribbling it back into the middle, netting her seventh goal of the year. And the Lady Cougars look as good as they have at any point this season so yeah, far. They are, they, this is really encouraging. This is, uh, this is really professionally done, routinely game. You know, everything looked good. Uh, every line offensively, defensively in the midfield, they, we were solid everywhere. There's no weak spot there. And, and I think that that's perfect for Coach Jay. Uh, Coach Jay will be very happy with this performance. So are we. So they head off to the semifinals, 5 o'clock on Friday in Evans, Georgia at Blanchard Woods Park. They'll see the winner of UNC Pembroke and Lander. Championship happening at 3.30 on Sunday. We hope we're back with you next week for the NCAA first and second round. The first round coming your way on Friday. If we're here, the Lady Cougars aren't playing on Friday. They'll play on Sunday at 1 o'clock. So we hope to see you then. Cougar Sports TV hits the air again on Friday night as the Lady Cougar volleyball team celebrates senior night as they'll welcome in UNC Pembroke. Tony, it's been fun, and hopefully we've got one more to do from here. Yeah, no, I, I'm looking forward to it. It was my pleasure and honor to do with you this, uh, this CSU game, and, and uh, I really enjoy it all season long. You know, you're a good partner, and hopefully we're going to go as long as we can with, the, with these girls. You know, I just love this little team, and I think uh, we have plenty more job to do here. Lady Cougars win at 5 nothing. We say so long here from Columbus, Georgia, from everybody here at Columbus State University, CSU Athletics and Cougar Sports TV. For my partner, Tony Frankovich, this is Stephen Williams saying so long from Columbus, Georgia.